All right, this is the last video in the series on the Geisler Cedar Strip Boats. I'm going to finish it up today. Not sure if I'll be doing anything else on this. I may do one on the trailer and the motor, but this should finish up this series and finish up this boat. So uh, follow along on part 10, and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Just have a few odds and ends to finish up and do the finishing, the staining and varnishing. So uh, we'll get that done here and show you what we did. All right, I finished the inside and uh, show you what I used. I, I only primed it. I stained it. I didn't varnish it yet. And on the uh, hull, I used red oak stain. And then on the rest of the wood, the seats and the, all the pine, I used uh, Ipswich pine. And I'll show you what it looks like. And I didn't sand down the bare wood and just keep working on it there's as much work as you want to make it out to be and i just about had enough of it so i called it quits and uh stained it now i'm going to put a coat of polyurethane on it then i'm going to do some sanding around the outside on the top sides and the the deck and possibly the pine i'm not sure about the hull and then I'll put another coat of polyurethane on that. I'm only going to put at the maximum two coats of polyurethane on it. I may even just leave one coat in the bilge. I don't want a lot of stain in there. I don't, if it does get wet, I'd like it to peel the polyurethane, the, uh, the, the varnish off. I'm not polyurethane, varnish, I'm sorry. I'd like it to push the varnish off and not get trapped in there. It can't go out the bottom. So I'm probably just going to do one coat of varnish in the bilge and two coats above the water line. And I can do as many coats as I want on the seats. It's not too, not there's not any sense of going real crazy. They're they're not the best condition. But uh good enough. It is what it is. And uh I'll finish this video doing the uh, different things, finish finish off things, finishing off things, and going from there. Now I have everything sanded. I re sanded the top sides and sanded the deck. Sanded everything inside and put on another coat of varnish on top of everything. We did the transom and just coat with varnish. After I finished that, I had some screws missing that I didn't put back in. And it's kind of interesting the way this boat is held together. It's kind of a marvel of engineering. There's screws that go in on the gunnel into the corner knee. And there's screws that go into the keel, screws go into the trim piece, nails all the way around the transom, so that when the motor pushes on the transom, it kind of pushes on everything all the way up. It's really interesting the way it's done. So I wanted to make sure I replaced all the screw pattern that I took out. And there was two screws in the gunnel that went through everything that... Uh, held the into the knee board and held everything together so I just put those screws in there was a couple screws in the strakes on the bottom that were missing and I put those in and went through everywhere where there wasn't where, where I needed to finish up screwing things together made sure everything was tight I used a little Johnson's wax to help the screws go in and help the lot 
you don't have much trouble if you're going into the old wood, but when you go into that new oak, you'll break right off the screws as I found out in earlier videos. Another thing that ties it all together is the seats. You wouldn't think so, but there's four screws that go into the sides and four screws that go into the transom. And that also gives it a lot of support. Like I said, when the motor pushes on the transom, it's not just pushing on the transom, it's pushing on everything at once. And everything's interconnected so that there's not a lot of force on the transom. It's transferred throughout the boat. These screws here go right through, straight on through to the piece underneath. So they're quite long. And... Putting the screws onto the seat. The ones in the front on that leg don't support too much. They just support to hold the seat up. But the other ones tie into the sides and into the transom. These are the square headed, square tipped screws that I bought from Noah's Marine Supply. They were kind of hard to find, but I wanted to use the same kind of screws that they used when they built the boat. Had a little trouble getting the screws underneath the knee boards so I had to use a small drill that didn't take up so much space and also put the screws in by hand. As you see I got the floorboards in I just fixed those up replaced a couple pieces actually I took them all apart and what boards I could use over I used over again and uh, Put the floorboards in and it's kind of good seeing everything come together out in the first video and the second video and the third video it looked endless but i knew once i did the bottom with all the preliminary work i knew it was going to go quick I got a box of goodies from Facebook Marketplace, $75 including the shipping. Let's see what I got. Some cleats. A bow light. And a stern light. Bow light's a little bit big, but that's what we're going to use. So let's put them in. This wasn't exactly what I was looking for. I just went looking for trying to find a vintage uh, bow and stern light, and I came across the, this setup that came off of an old Chris Craft that somebody had on. Facebook Marketplace. The Geisler boats are kind of bare bones. Some brass cleats and get the extra steering and things like that. But uh, And I believe this one did have a bow light and a stern light. But I don't know what it would have looked like. But this uh, bow light that I bought is a little oversized for this boat. But for $75 for everything, I thought... Uh, I would have to take a chance on it. When it came, I decided I would use all the pieces, the chrome cleats, 
the tie-off stations, stations and the bow light and the stern light. I didn't hook it up. I just put it in and I'll uh, get an LED bulb and hook it up later. I'll just go and put the rest of these pieces in. I'm putting the, these two screws on a cross piece so that it has some strength. I'll put the bow light, the stern light, and the rest of the cleats in. You can watch along. I haven't done a full cost analysis of how much this project costs, but if you'd like to see a video on how much this project costs, uh, put the comment down below and uh, maybe I'll get around to doing that and give a rough estimate of what the cost was to do this boat. It's not cheap. And uh, all I did was rebuild it. And I look at the price of a new Geisler boat. This boat's about $5,000 new. But if you ever priced out some of this stuff, that price doesn't look too high. I was looking at uh, how much cedar strips would cost. And uh, the one place I looked, it had enough, I think, to do a canoe. And it was uh, $900 for the cedar strips all trimmed out and molded the way they fit together. Now, I know uh, Geisler makes their own cedar uh, strips. And that saves some money, but trying to find premium cedar, 10 foot long with no knots, you're going to pay a pretty price. So by the time you add the cedar, the rest of the wood, the hardware, the finish, and the labor, I don't think $5,000 is high at all. As a matter of fact, I think it's a bargain. So if you want to see a cost analysis, put a comment down below. And I'll let you know what I got into the boat. Here I'm putting the stern light in. Interesting, the stern light, I put it on the port side because that's where it was originally on the port side. All the navigation pictures I saw show it on the stern side, the starboard side. But nowhere does it say which side it has to be in. So I stuck with the original plan because the battery's on this side and all this and put it on this uh, port side. The stern light's kind of a nice light. Goes up and down, it'll hold a flag. I'll have to get myself a flag and do a video on my first time out. Well, that's going to finish up this project. Here's a couple pictures of the finished project. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing it. I don't have any room to do another one or I would. Here's uh, some shots of how it turned out. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you try it yourself sometime. Keep looking on the, around in the classified, see if you can find an old beat up boat. Try and get one that's not too rough and tackle it as a project. Just don't go in over your head. Just know your limitations. If you like this series, if you like these videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and we'll see what's coming up next. So thanks for watching.